Welcome back to Let's Talk Business, brought to you by Reality NXT. This is Pradhanjali Rahul. On today's episode, our guest is Mr. Sharad Mittal, CEO, Motilal Oswal Real Estate. Hello, yeah, Mr. Hi. Mittal. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. So, uh, let's start with your journey with Motilal Oswal Real Estate, first of all. How it has been over all these years. Please share with us. So January has, journey has been very exciting. Uh, so let me just give you a little background. I joined Motila Loswal in April of 2013. So uh, close to seven years. And, um, and if you really look at from the real estate industry perspective, uh, the real estate, residential real estate property prices in India actually peaked in um, 2013, 14. Yeah. So uh, since then uh, market has been uh, has been has been uh, seen fairly headwinded especially after 2016 has been seen fairly headwinded environment but i'm happy to say that uh, during this period we have been able to uh, scale up uh, this practice um, have raised multiple funds uh, have been have been uh, have been one of the key players in the domestic real estate market so from that perspective there's been a lot of learning uh, i would say uh, in last uh, 7 years Okay, that's, uh, that's very good. So, uh, how Motilal Real Estate, with with expertise across all investment structures, has evolved over the years? So, I, I, I would say uh, the firm started this practice in two thousand nine ten. I joined in two thousand thirteen, and 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 uh, we further strengthened the team uh, then. So uh, before the before I came in along with a new team also joined and the earlier team also carried on. Uh, there was a one fund of uh, 160 crores which was there in place and the strategy at that point of time was to do pure equity. I would say with the uh, uh, with the change in the environment and the new team and a lot of internal debate and building up a strategy, uh, we moved towards doing more mezzanine structures, more debt oriented structures. Uh, focused a lot around doing uh, uh, IT cities. Uh, we stayed away from Delhi and Bombay yes. um, and worked only with large developers doing mid-income housing. So I think what, what I would say from a from a platform perspective, uh, from Mudila Oswal perspective, it's largely an investment house. And if I just add a couple of bits here, uh, Mudila Oswal manages money across the asset classes. So whether it is public market, whether it is private equity or real estate private equity. So we take a lot of pride in saying that the firm is a investing platform and all our funds, the, 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 the uh, uh, firm is the largest investor in all our funds, uh, whether it is real estate funds, private equity funds. So there is a lot of know-how that gets shared across the platforms. There are a lot of learnings. And of course, we have common pool of investors for all asset classes. So I would say the firm has really evolved over a period of time, starting with a very small 160 crore fund in 2009-10. And then from say 2013, moving more towards doing mid-income housing in MES9. And uh, we continue to evolve uh, because the markets are very dynamic. Right, right. So uh, right now, COVID-19 situation is going on. And uh, we all know that uh, COVID has kept the market in a very gloomy situation. So what do you think is the real estate need of the hour for the real estate segment? You know, the biggest challenge uh, is the liquidity. Uh, liquidity is the biggest challenge. Uh, NBFC, which was the primary source of capital for real estate uh, between 2013 and 18, have also taken a bit of a pause right now. So I would say liquidity of any form and shape needs to be created. And that's the biggest challenge in residential market. Right. Uh, Sales remains muted, uh, remains challenging. And post-COVID, uh, there are other challenges which has got added around it. But I would like to believe that over the period of next two years, the primary challenge that we need to address is creating liquidity. Because I think the entire credit cycle has broken. Uh, if you really see, there are four kinds of capital provider for real estate. Uh, there are PSU banks, uh, there are NDFCs, there are private banks, and there are funds. Uh, PSUs have been struggling with their own set of problems except SBI. I can't think of anyone else who have been very active in this space. Uh, NBFCs, which used to be, like I said, which is the primary source of capital, has kind of taken a pause post ILFS crisis. Uh, real estate funds, we are one of them, but from a size perspective, the, the real estate funds can provide limited amount of uh, uh, capital. Absolutely. That leaves private banks. 
and the private banks also oh, i would say post yes bank fiasco so yes bank and some of the other private banks have also decided to go slow so i would say the ecosystem of providing credit to real estate sector has kind of shrunk and i think as a sector that's one big worry and if the capital is not if the the credit is not coming as 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 it is it should come then you need to create liquidity from your sales and i think developers would uh, focus a lot to create liquidity through through uh, sales over a period of next couple of years yes so uh, while talking about real estate funds uh, please tell us how do you as access the future of real estate funds i i think uh, uh, i see real estate funds playing a significant role uh, as we go forward if you look at uh, there are largely uh, i would say four asset classes in real estate so there is residential which which account for 75% of the market then there is commercial then there is retail warehousing and other sectors uh, the smaller ones uh, was co living co working and so on and so forth if you really see closely in commercial real estate private equity funds the global private equity funds in specific have played a played a key role in consolidating that industry if you see today uh, there are large private equity funds which have come in and put in significant amount of long term capital to bring in discipline to bring in governance to bring in scale into those businesses we are seeing the same thing in retail as well and in the warehouse as well resi is going through a significant change the way the business is done uh, residential real estate and probably it will take couple of more years for really to sector to get cleaned up and get consolidated i have no doubt in my mind that from a long term perspective private equity uh, real estate pool a significant role to put in get in an equity or a mezzanine in place and the construction finance which is the second leg of the capital requirement will be done by the banks and nbfc so i believe uh, in residential real estate private equity funds have played actually a limited role uh, barring four or five active funds i don't see anyone active but as this things cleans up or or there is more clarity on how the sector will play out i see a lot of capital coming into this sector right right so uh, with the funds of more than uh, with the funds of more than 1000 crores you have been investing a lot in real estate sector please tell us what are the factors you keep in mind before going ahead with such huge investment yeah just one correction there we overall we manage four funds and accumulative volume is close to 3500 crores yes. our new fund we just closed raising is a 1200 crore fund see before you do investing uh, first of all you need to get your strategy Uh, you need to have have a crystal clear strategy on what you want to do okay. uh, we devised our strategy 7 years back when we moved from doing say you know smaller fund equity to doing more mass nine our strategy all along has been to work with large meaningful developers uh, largely in it cities doing mid income housing under mass nine structure with an active management that's broadly is what we have been doing so one needs to have a very crystal clear strategy one should not get swayed by look uh, now the flavor is uh, commercial or there is a very nice plotting so we have we have we have been very focused on doing mid income housing no not low cost not luxury but the mid income right. one of the key most criteria in this business is to get the right partner partner choice otherwise also in india is extremely important but in real estate becomes paramount and in this is one business where we can, you can do continue to grow with the same partner uh, you can do multiple transactions unlike a typical private equity we do one time investing uh, in real estate if you get the right kind of partner so choice of partner is the first and the foremost important thing the second important thing is the project match whether the whether the kind of underwriting that you are doing is it conservative enough to take the external shocks that can come Uh, so i think conservative underwriting is the second important thing it has come really handy to us we are very conservative underwriter we are very risk averse people and i think that is something which is important with the kind of cycle that we have seen um third uh, in this is is the 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 legal and the technical part of it but i think the real business around real estate investing starts once you have put in money uh, like i keep saying that giving money is the easiest thing getting back is the skill in right. this uh, once you get money for developer uh, getting money with a desired return is the hard work so i think in this business for us what is also very important is the entire entire, entire asset management process 
What do I mean by asset management is that once the money is gone in, you need to be deeply involved into the project. You need to know where the money is going, what kind of design, what sizes of apartment, what sales strategy is going to be there, what payment plans are going to be there, and you need to be involved with the cash flow movement of the project. So I think it's a combination of all of it which makes a good investment. Getting a strategy, right partner, conservative underwriting, and post the money has been deployed, very active asset management. Okay, okay, uh, that's great. So, uh, because of COVID-19 situation, now, earlier also technology had uh, gained a lot of importance over the years, but because of COVID-19, it's like the technology we were supposed to use maybe 10 years later, we are using right now, we have become much more advanced. So what do you think is the future going to be like when it comes to creating better engagement with customers with the help of technology? I think one of the things that COVID-19, one of the impact for COVID-19 is that it will accelerate the entire pace of change. That's Something which would have happened over a period of say a decade. Uh, and that's we are seeing across the board. And because everybody has got at home and technology, we are chatting on Zoom and it's working very well. And, and, and actually, uh, most of the people are realizing that the technology has been a big enabler. So I think it will accelerate the changes which has to be happening within the real estate. Uh, I would not hesitate in saying that the real estate developers or the real estate industry per se, including the funds as well, technology has not been greatly adopted. Uh, uh, it remains a brick and mortar business and the adoption of technology, I would say, has, been, has not been that much before COVID. But I think technology will play a great role. I think when, and eventually from B2C perspective and from a sales perspective, which has been a critical challenge for the industry over a period of last three, four years, your consumer is stuck to the screen. The consumer has adopted the technology. Today, he's, he is, he, whether it is his entertainment or whether it is shopping or a lot of other things are happening through the, uh, through the technology or th technology interface, whether it is e-commerce, OTTs and so on and so forth. The entire entertainment, sports, uh, you look at uh, uh, youngsters, I think uh, they play uh, mostly on, on uh, the, the outdoor sport has significantly reduced. Uh, yeah. So I think real estate industry would need to see, I don't know whether developers can do it or not, but there will be specialist player and, and we already have seen like square yards and anorak and so on and so forth. I think the sales end of it has to be technology enabled. There is no doubt in my mind. Uh, there, one is that. Second is the, uh, the entire supply chain within the, the construction also can play, technology can play a significant role in that. And then the monitoring part of it. What I feel happy uh, is about, uh, because technology will disrupt a lot of businesses and we are seeing that technology has disrupted so many conventional businesses. Uh, but real estate it will remain an enabler, not a disruptor, because eventually there is a brick and mortar which is required to build a house. So technology probably would be a great enabler uh, in a real estate sector. That sounds really great. So going forward, do you see that the next big trend that will emerge where uh, you know developers would focus more on planning and licensing and construction and a special team would be hired just for the marketing can we see any such engagement on behalf of your company in future so i think real estate developers are, are already doing it uh, i think real estate developer unfortunately gets bashed uh, a lot uh, and they're they are probably have this conventional notion that uh, they are, they, are, they, they, they are still operating in old world. But let me tell you, uh, our we have 30 developer partner and, and they have actually uh, in last four, five years really changed a lot. The markets have been very dynamic. So uh, funds will play a role. Uh, all investors, all stakeholders, we need to be, get involved to see how they can create more value for the consumer. Let me tell you that there is a paradigm shift that everyone in the real estate needs to bring in. Everybody is here working to bring more value to the consumer. Okay. Uh, gone are the days where uh, developers could delay the project. Gone are the days where the suboptimal projects get, product can be given. Everyone in, involved in the value chain has to work towards giving an efficient uh, value delivery to the consumer. And uh, there will be more business models that will evolve. And funds probably could play a large role. Uh, 
in from a strategic ideas perspective because uh, whether it is the strategy around sales whether it is strategy around their balance sheet management their debts cash flow funds can play a very significant role in that okay uh, so uh, what do you think going forward like if we talk about next say 12 months or uh, 24 months what would be the most significant risk and challenges that you and your business would face over the period of this time so what do you think what is the challenges like so i think one big challenge that all of us are witnessing right now is how this whole covid 19 situation plays out yes um one thing is for sure it is not going away in 3 months um, how as a country as a policy maker we deal uh, with the entire challenge uh the sites needs to get active uh, the consumer needs to get that confidence coming back to the site uh, how will be the various sectors and the employees working there and their their remuneration and some other things will play out so i think the environment remains very dynamic uh, i think one big risk is the uncertainty around how this unfolding of covid will take place but if i have to really look at from two year to five year perspective uh, near term can get little uh, little um, uh, opinionated and probably can get little colored because of the way the environment is right now but if i look at largely from say two to five years and beyond perspective i think residential should do well uh, and my reasons for believing that is as follow one residential property prices has been stagnated for 7 years they probably will remain like that for a couple of more years a 8 to 10 years period of stagnation will make it extremely affordable so what you could have bought for say uh, example a 5000 rupees a square feet in bangalore you can buy the same thing for 5000 today and probably for next two more years but the income level during this period has gone up uh, wage inflation in these markets have been between 7 to 8% so that that makes it affordable okay. the second driver is the uh, mortgage rate we are at a uh, 15 year uh, low mortgage rate uh, the home loan rates they have fallen sub 7% and i believe it will remain here for some time that's also a one big driver third thing which is non financial and i keep hearing from people uh, this lockdown actually uh, and that's probably could be more emotional reason this lockdown yeah. has got people the real need of the house they 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 need they need their own house they need a space of their own uh, and uh, probably if work from home is going to be something which is going to play out maybe not in large extent but say even 10 15% people will feel a need of having a house where they can create a small office for themselves from all those perspective i believe maybe next 12 to 24 months we will keep facing challenges around debt unwinding some of these low sales and some of the other challenges that we keep hearing but 2 2 to 5 years and beyond i believe there is lot of opportunities in mid income housing houses built for end users not houses luxury houses built for speculation that's not going to work that probably has a next 3 to 5 years of trouble time but houses built for middle class with a end users mind uh, is i think will do really well over a longish period of time absolutely and uh, during covid people have realized that you know instead of renting it's a very good uh, thing to have your own place to have your own home so all of a sudden people have realized that you know the requirement to have a safe place where uh, we don't know how long covid will go on and uh, usually people suffer problems like we have people who have rented the place so they usually face the problems like okay in between my agreement is over now i might have to move out so maybe yeah. these are very small small problems and people with families with kids they would like to solve yes. these problems yes in fact one of the economic if you look at purely from financial perspective also the rental yields in cities larger metros have inched toward 2 and 1/2 and 3% and the mortgage rate has come down to 6 and 1/2 7% so the gap between renting a house and buying and also this probably is one of the best times from a perspective that prices have been at the bottom and probably will remain like that for 12 24 months but this is the best time for end users to really go out and strike a deal uh, they would get good deals from the developer as well so i believe over a period of next 2 years as the as the negative news uh, flow reduces or goes down or we form a new bottom and whatever challenges of the sector uh, i think we should probably post 2 years but the luxury market uh, the high end market uh, some of the micro markets in delhi and bombay i think the struggle will be continue beyond 2 years as well yes 
Uh, that's absolutely right. So uh, that was my last question for you. Before we sign off, would you like to share something with us? No, I think it's great, uh, great talking to you. Uh, um, and um, I'm looking forward to uh, to the impact of this COVID in more positive way. Uh, I'm 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 seeing how the how the how the office, the organizations can become more efficient. Uh, technology adoption uh, should make all of us more efficient. Um, and I hope uh, we get back to normal world very soon. Uh, uh, and uh, and 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 uh, look forward to look forward to a more. Uh, I would say a uh, more efficient way of doing businesses. Definitely, as you rightly said that, you know, uh, residential will be the future. And I really wish, uh, like how commercial sector is bleeding right now, something, uh, you know, we're able to solve those problems also. So that'll be great. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, thank you very much for joining us and uh, thank you. the insightful experience. To the audience, we will thank come you. back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. To the audience, we'll come back with many more exciting journeys of brands on Let's Talk Business. For more information, follow Reality NXT. This is Vedanjali Ravi signing off.